Hello, my name is Linda Dolkey. I'm a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! here in Australia. And today for Fancy Friday, I'm showing you how to create cute vintage backgrounds simply with a white craft ink and your embossing folders. So stick around and see how it's done. So our projects today are these cute little uh, vintage kind of cards. Um, I have gone for a vintage background and I've created it with two things. I've used the country floral embossing folder um, and I've used some white craft ink. Now white craft ink is something I think everybody should have in their collection. It's so useful for so many different techniques um, and you're going to see how we use it to create these great vintage backgrounds on these cards. So I'm actually going to do instead of a green background, this is Mossy Meadow I've used here, but I'm actually going to be using Blackberry Bliss because I wanted to see what that would look like. Um, and on this one I've used Crumb Cake cardstock. So we'll start with this one first. There are two different ways to get these effects if you look closely this one the flowers are highlighted and the background is the original color in this one the background is highlighted and the flowers are darker so it is in both cases using white craft ink but they're used quite differently so let's move these out of the way and bring our pieces in for the um, crumb cake card and I'm, I'm starting with a piece of whisper white Sorry, beg your pardon. Very vanilla. This is very vanilla. Um, I'm putting my glasses on so that I can see what I'm doing. And we're just going to have that folded in half and set aside for now. And um, I'll come back to that piece. Really all we need right now is this piece here. Now, the country embossing folder, as I mentioned, is a dynamic embossing folder. So that is a little different to your regular embossing folders. So let's bring our big shot in. So I can oops, I'll go this way um, to show you how it works. So I'm going to sandwich my piece of um, cardstock inside. All right. So it's um, inside the folder. Now with the dynamic folders, you need to get rid of all the layers on your big shot and just have the base platform. If you have one that has the hinges, make sure it's completely open. Otherwise, if you're using the big shot platform that has the thin die adapter get rid of the thin die adapter all you need is the base platform and then straight on top of the platform no cutting plate we put our folder with our paper inside and then one cutting plate on top you only need one okay so i'm just going to roll that through just bear with me while i do that really quickly and that's going to give us a beautiful embossed effect move that out of the way and to get this beautiful whitewashed look, I'm using my craft ink. I'm using a sponge dauber. And what you want to do is make sure you get plenty of the white ink onto the dauber. And I'm going to start here with, it um, doesn't matter where I start, I can start with any part of the design. Straight up and down, you don't want to have it on an angle or it will start to get more into the grooves. I'm just going to go in a circular motion and it's just going to pick up that lovely detail um, if you've got like leaves rather than a circular motion for those I kind of just went out with the shape of the leaves but the flowers themselves I'm more or less going with a circular motion you will get a little bit on the background don't worry too much about that the majority of the ink is going onto the flowers and that's what we want so you can see it's very quick and easy to do I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you can see that it's picked up all that lovely detail but left the majority of the background the original crumb cake color. Crumb cake is a great color um, for vintage for a vintage look um, and I love it combined with the white. It's very soft and pretty and then we would just decorate our bits up. I've actually got a bit of, um, I won't put it all together now but you'll be able to see the result. Um, I've got a little bit of this delightfully detailed paper here. Actually, I'll just chop that. Let me grab those couple of pieces. And those are going to go across here, just like this. One up. 
and I would use either Tombow or even a little bit of snail to put those on and trim off the edges. I've also got some fresh fig. Um, if you have uh, lace, lace would look great as well. That's also a great thing to add to a vintage look. And then this little piece here would go in between. And then I've got this great little punch. This punch here is um, the story. I think it's a storybook label punch. I will double check that for you and it'll be written on the screen so you'll be able to see how close I was. So I've got this piece here. And a little bit of bling never goes astray. I'm using a one and a half inch circle punch just to punch out a little bit of... Actually, I'll do a second one because the other card uses one as well. And then... I also have, I'm using the Just For You stamp from the Dear Doily stamp set. Now this is a cling stamp set that's available in our current uh, occasions catalogue and this is the one I'm using here that says Just For You. I love all these doilies. You can get do great vintage cards with that set. Just beautiful. And I'm just going to do two. And then I've got the one and a quarter inch punch. And I'm just going to line that up. If you put them in with your punches, always punch upside down so you can see where you're going. All right, I'll do the other one while I'm here as well. Okay. Right, to assemble that, I would have this piece on here and this piece on here. I like to use dimensionals underneath. Probably ink around the edges of this piece as well. And the whole thing will go together, as you see on here and you can see how beautiful having that blackberry piece underneath here with all the blackberry bits and pieces just brings out that lovely detail how nice is that yeah beautiful um and there is the finished card that's what it looks like and you can see how easy that is to do okay let's show you version two so the version two is where we're getting the background colored rather than the flowers all right, you can see I did it on here. So the background is colored and my flowers are actually the color, the original color of the cardstock. So they're standing out against that light background. So this time I'm gonna do this with the blackberry piece. And I'm gonna be bringing my big shot in again in a minute. But once again, the star of the show is the white craft ink. And I'm going to actually use the folder. Now, if you use the fold, we're gonna put ink inside the folder. Don't panic, it's easy to clean off. Um, if you put it on the back of the piece where the Stampin' Up! logo and the Sizzix logo are, if you put it on the back of that, you're going to colour the background because the design is actually recessed into there. And so when we wipe our ink pad over the back, we're colouring the background. If we did this side, we would actually get the design, but then that will be recessed into the card. So if you wanted that look, um, the only way to get it on the... Uh, like a, an embossed piece where it's actually out from the card is to do what we did and just sponge the color on and you saw how easy that was to do. This time I'm going to take my ink pad and I'm actually going to drag that wet ink pad across the back of my embossing folder. Now you can do this with any embossing folder but I do find that the dynamic ones give me the best result because they're nice and deep so I prefer to use the dynamic ones where I can and we've got some lovely lovely dynamic folders at the moment now the more you add and the wetter your pad the more dramatic the background will be okay if you have some swipe marks I don't think that matters I think it looks quite nice so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this down on the opposite side and then I am going to close my pad, okay? Then I'm gonna bring in my Big Shot and I'm gonna do as I did before. And I'm gonna roll it through. I'm sorry if it wobbles the camera a little bit. That's what happens when you use trestle tables like the ones I have here. All right, let's pull that out and see what happened. And when you open it up, you should be able to see we've got the white background and then we also have um, the flowers standing out in the original colour behind that. Now, the wetter it is, the more dramatic. 
However, you can see it wasn't quite as wet. I didn't use as much white when I did this one. So it's going to give you a different result depending on the colour, but also depending on how much white ink you use. It's still a really great effect and will create a beautiful vintage look for you. So there you go guys, there's two different looks, totally different, to show you the difference between sponging on your white and actually putting the white inside the folder and doing the background. Just remember to put the white onto the back of where the logo is and as far as cleaning it up afterwards, I just use a baby wipe and, um, and wipe over the inside or a chamois if you have one. The chamois is great because it gets into all the little crevices. Um, if you um, once you've done that, once you've used your chamois or your wipes, you just want to then uh, wipe it over with a, a paper towel or something dry so, um, so that you'll get it nice and clean and ready to go next time you want to use it. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'll be back with another Fancy Friday next Friday. Thanks, guys. Bye. So thanks for watching, guys. The Country Floral Embossing Folder is available right now as a free item with a $90 order here in Australia. Or if you want to wait around until June, it will be available in our next annual catalogue. They've announced that just this week. So I hope you enjoyed the, the video and I will be back with more for you soon. Bye.